Welcome back. Here's the infamous cricket underarm. Now, David, come on, I've been absolutely <laughs> mystified for the last uh, however many minutes. You had a very strange beginning to the show. What was going on there? Well, I was actually speaking in a lipogram, uh, L-I-P-O-G-R-A-M, and it comes from Greek meaning lipogrammatos, missing letter. So in that uh, intro, I was actually saying uh, all my piece without using the letter E. So every word you were trying to think of... You were, you were making sure it didn't contain an E. So I couldn't say letters and numbers, and that's why I said anagrams and maths or word agitation and digital manipulation, <laughs> because those phrases avoid an E. And the reason being that uh, this is a, a sort of literary discipline, if you like. Can you possibly write Mary Had a Little Lamb without using the letter O? I don't know about li literary discipline. That's like literary torture. Oh, no, look, it's a great. It's actually, you can discover new styles of writing or new voices. For example, Mary Had a Little Lamb without an O, Mary had a little lamb, the bleached and chalky kind, and everywhere she went, the lamb was rarely left behind. It's the same <laughs> verse, essentially, without an O. It's a lipogram. Right. And uh, famously, in 1939, there was a writer called Ernest Vincent Wright who rewrote The Great Gadsby without using the letter E. 50,000 words, none of them containing an E, the only problem being that he couldn't declare his genius on the front cover because his first name was Ernest. <laughs> 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 Thank you, David. That is a crazy word, lipogram. Let's uh, look forward to some more crazy words in a moment, but let's look at our scores first. Jody Ann is on seven, Cormac's on 11, and uh, let's see what we can find in the new letters. To Cormac, what would you like? I'll start with a consonant, please, Lou. Thank you. Let's start with D. And a vowel, please. A. A consonant. S. And a vowel, please. E. Another vowel. O. Consonant. R. Consonant, please. B. A vowel. U. And a consonant. And lastly, L. And 30 seconds. Cormac? Uh, I'll try seven. Seven sounds good. Jodie Ann? A six. Let's start there, please. Blouse. And your seven? Rubles. David, good? Yeah, could you just spell it for me, please, Cormac? R O U B L E S. Rubles. No troubles with rubles. Well done. A good seven. Now, Jodie Ann, you could have added a D to blouse for blouse, which is OK. Anagram of doubles. And if you add an R to doubles, you get doublers which is actually a shearing term I've just discovered. Looking in the dictionary, it is a ram over six months old that is counted as two sheep in, in the shearer's tally. Oh, maybe that's because, it, you know, it wriggles a lot or maybe <laughs> it has a lot of wool. A lot of wool, I think. It's a strange term, isn't it? It is. Interesting one, though. Thank you, David. But seven points in that round for Cormac. Let's have some more of those letters now. And, uh, Jodie Ann, what do you fancy? I'll class out with a vowel, please. Thank you. A. And a second. O. And one more. I. And switch to the consonants. T. And a second. D. And one more. H. And a fourth. F. And a vowel. U. And lastly, a consonant, please. And lucky last T. And I'll start the clock.
What did you make of that mix, Jodie Ann? Um, just a four. A four for you, Cormac? A uh, silly four as well. Did you say a silly four? A silly four indeed. <laughs> okay, let's go for it. Daft. Daft. <laughs> okay, it was a silly but a good four. Jodie Ann? I also had daft. <laughs> could, you, could you just verify you're both daft there? <laughs> they're very happily daft, though. They are, and they're rewarded for their daftness. Uh, good fours. It really was one of the uh, gnarliest mixes we've had on uh, the show for a while, Richard. Um, Faith was a five that leapt out, and the only six that I could find was Outfit. Outfit is good, but both Jodie Ann and Cormac scored solid fours. Now, Cormac, you were talking before about uh, your poker skills. You've got to be able to have a, an absolutely unreadable poker face to be good at poker. Just look at me. <laughs> now, give me your poker face. <laughs> ah, no. How's that? Pocket aces. I can see straight through you. No worries. Some numbers, please. Well, we'll see what these cards deliver. Um, can I have one big shark and five little fishies, please? Yeah, me? sure. <laughs> I like that. One big shark and five little fishies and our numbers. Nine, seven, six, ten, three, and our shark is 100. And the target number is 405. Let's go fishing. How good was your catch from that shoal? Uh, one away. One four, away? Uh, four or six. Four o oh six. Jodie Ann? Um, I'm on target. Four o oh five. Four o oh five. Well done. OK. Take us there, please. OK. So, uh, ten minus six. Ten minus six. Equals four. Yep. Uh, times 100. Five, 100 is 400. Is 400. Plus three. Uh, plus three. Plus nine, nine minus seven. Plus nine minus seven. Seven is two, is 405. Very nice work, Jodie Ann. Spot on. Great method. Did uh, you do it the same, Lily? I did use the same method. Excellent work. Well, it worked beautifully for Jodie Ann and scored her 10 very big points. And hasn't that brought the scores close? Jodie Ann, 21, just one behind Cormac on 22 as we head for our next break. Another word mix for you Onion Tad. This time, the clue. Gift to another who needs it. Back in a while.